Hello everybody and welcome to this demo on how to fill out a TD1 for your tax return. Uh, if you'll notice, I just searched up TD1 and 2024. Sometimes the employer will give you this form and that's this PDF here that you can print and fill out in pen. I'm going to use the fillable one and just downloaded it so I have it loaded and ready to go. Now on this form, it looks a little bit complicated, but actually it's not. There's just a few things that apply to most students. Uh, make sure you have the current tax year as well for 2024 because these personal claim months change. You'll need to write and print your last name, your first name, your date of birth with four digit year, two digit month, two digit date, your employee number if you know it. If you don't know it, you can leave it blank. Your address in full with street and city and province, your postal code, your country of resident if you're non resident. And you must enter your social insurance number. Uh, this form is going to your employer and to Revenue Canada. And so it's safe to enter your social insurance number in this document. Okay, so for number one, you enter 15,705. I've got it entered there already. For every Canadian, we'll enter this. What this basically means is if you earn under 15,705, you won't owe any income tax in Canada. And this amount actually increases every year. So if you want, you can fill out a new one of these every year. But basically, if your income is under 15,705, you should not pay tax and nor should you have tax being deducted off of your check. Number two is for a caregiver amount. So this is if you have children. So for each child, a parent, one parent may claim 2616 for the children who are born and the children that you have. So if you have one or more, you claim 2616 for each child for dependent. So that's parents can claim that just to help families with parents pay less tax. Number three is for older citizens. Uh, if you're 65 or older, uh, if you're collecting pension, you would enter an amount here. Number five might pertain to students once they're done school and if they're taking post-secondary to college or, or educational institution and pay tuition, you would enter the tuition fees that you're paying on this line here. And again, that's to help students pay less tax and uh, claim their tuition. If you're not paying your tuition, but you're going to school, if your parent is paying it, you can actually transfer it to your parents farther down and I'll show you that as well. Number six is if you have a designated disability, you can actually claim an amount to pay less tax. Seven, eight, and nine, and 10 are actually all to do with people who might be caring for a spouse, a dependent or a child that's over the age of 18, um, someone else other than a spouse, so for example, a parent or a grandparent that might be living with you. All of those allow you to claim an amount per person if you're caring for someone, if you're a caregiver in your house for a family member, dependent or spouse, that's infirm. And infirm basically means, you see this word infirm all throughout, uh, someone who's dependent on you for care. Okay, so that's eight, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, number 11 would be a spouse. If you have a spouse could transfer amount to you that they may not need to claim. So for example, if they're older, if they have pension, if your spouse is going to university or college and they can transfer the tuition to you. So if you're earning a wage and the spouse is going to school, you can actually use your spouse's tuition on your tax return. Um, and then number 12 would be amount transferred from a child. So same thing as the above one. So this one is mostly to do with tuition. So if you're a parent is paying the tuition for a child, the parent can use the tuition as a tax deduction and the child would have to transfer that to the parent. And so since none of these apply right now to a student, we'll just put the total claim amount as line add lines one through 12, which is 15,705. There's no additional deductions at this time. Make sure you fill out the back. I've seen students miss the back page when they're filling out this form. Um, the only box I have checked here is total income is less than claim amount. This would be applied when a student is earning and you think all your jobs, maybe you have a one or two part-time jobs, you're in school perhaps, that your income will be less than 15,500, 705. You would check that box. There's no sense in uh, paying income tax initially if you're going to make less than that amount then you'll have to file the following April and then wait for your tax return. So you may have to wait up to 16 months to get your taxes back that they deducted when you really didn't owe it. So it's your earnings, your income, you might as well have all the money for yourself and tick this box. 
Uh, this box here is more than one employer at the same time. So once you're making more money and you have a higher wage, you might want to check this if you have a couple jobs and you're making quite a bit just to make sure there's enough tax taken off. I still may not check this box. If you want to try and save tax, if you have lots of income and a couple jobs, you're better off to put money into an RSP instead. And that'll allow your tax deduction to come down, your taxable earnings, and then you will get uh, either a tax refund or pay less taxes that way. That's a better idea. So the only box I've got checked is this one. If you're a non-resident, you'd answer yes or no. And then the other deduction that's allowable back here is if you're living up north. So there's Northern Living Allowance. If you're living in Northwest Territories, Nunavut, Yukon, or other prescribed northern zones, you can check that link for what is considered north uh, for six months or more. So you actually get a, a tax deduction, some tax relief. It's an effort to recruit people to work up north and take jobs. And so you actually can save a lot of tax and make some pretty good money if, if you want it. And then this box says additional tax to be deducted. I don't recommend people write that in. Um, again, if you're worried about owing tax in the end, you're better off to put additional money of your own into an RSP instead of additional money into tax. Put it into an RSP. It's an investment for you. You can invest it in a mutual fund, make some return, and then get the tax deduction and reduce your tax payable that way is a better idea. Now, the last step in all of this, of course, there's links here and phone numbers to help you with this, but that's pretty straightforward. You would sign your first and last name with pen and make sure you date it today's date and hand it to your employer to make sure that there's proper taxes coming off. So that will conclude our demo on how to fill out a TD-1 form for the tax return filing and to make sure that your tax deductions are proper.